In this video, I'm comparing premium hearing aid technology with advanced hearing aid technology to see if premium really is better. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. A highly debated topic between individuals with hearing loss and hearing care professionals alike is whether or not premium hearing aid technology really is any better than lower levels of technology. Now just in case you have no idea what I'm talking about, here's a little crash course in hearing aid tech levels. No matter what hearing aid style you decide to go with, you can have any type of hearing aid technology placed inside of that hearing aid. It's very similar with computers. You can have different computers that look different from each other, but it's what's on the inside that matters. Most hearing aid manufacturers offer between three and five technology levels. You have the premium, which I call tier one, advanced, otherwise known as tier two, standard, which is tier three, basic, which is tier four, and finally, essential, which is tier five. Basically, the higher the level of technology, the better that hearing aid is supposed to perform. Every hearing aid manufacturer puts their best features inside of these higher tiers of devices, as well as making those devices more customizable. Each time you go down in a tier level, it takes some of those features and customizations away till you get to the point where you have a pretty basic hearing aid. However, there is one other thing that happens each time you go down in tech level. You also go down in price. Premium tier one hearing aids can cost hundreds, if not thousands of dollars more than their lower technology counterparts. So naturally, this begs the question, are these higher levels of technology actually worth it? Meaning, is it worth spending a lot more money potentially going with a premium level device than it does to save a lot of money and go with a more basic device? In a study published in 2014 by the late researcher Dr. Robin Cox and others out of the University of Memphis, they wrote, and bear with me here because this is important, modern hearing aids from major manufacturers are remarkably sophisticated devices which can yield substantially improved speech understanding and quality of life for older adults with uncomplicated adult onset mild to moderate sensory neural hearing loss. However, it cannot be assumed that more technologically sophisticated premium devices will provide greater benefits in daily life than less sophisticated basic devices. The combined laboratory and real world outcomes in our research are consistent with the conclusion that when hearing aids are programmed, fit and fine tuned using best practice protocols, wearers similar to our participants will obtain essentially equivalent improvement in speech understanding and quality of life, whether they use basic level or premium level feature technology. Because basic level technology is less costly, benefit per unit cost would be higher for these devices. Therefore, it would be expected that patients will find them to have higher value than premium level hearing aids. Basically, the outcome of this study showed that premium level hearing aid technology showed no significant improvements over basic level technology if best practice protocols were followed. The problem is, this doesn't necessarily agree with what I typically see inside of my clinic. Big surprise, I know. I mean, come on, of course I believe that premium technology is better than any of these lower tiers of technology. This is what hearing aid manufacturers have been telling me my entire career. And on top of that, I actually make more money when I sell premium devices, right? On top of that, patients are biased because they're being told constantly that premium level technology is better for them. I mean, why else would it cost more? You see, since I got started in audiology back in 2012, I've had patients tell me over and over how much better they like their premium level devices than their advanced level devices or lower. The first time I heard this was literally in my first year as a graduate student at the University of Illinois. I had a patient come in who actually got hearing aids from an external clinic, so not the university clinic, but the local hospital. He came in and he was actually saying that he was trialing basic level devices and premium level devices and ultimately with the goal of choosing which one was better for him. 
he felt the premium level devices were better and he was actually willing to spend two thousand total dollars more to get the premium devices versus the basic devices now of course this individual's perceptions could have been skewed because he actually knew which devices he was trying at any given moment so he could have just convinced himself that he must be doing better with the more expensive premium technology now mind you this was two years before the release of this data from the Cox study so at that time I was already starting to shape my mindset to just inherently believe the premium technology was better than the other lower tiers so you know what I did you guessed it I decided to conduct several case studies inside of my clinic to to determine if it is even ethical for me to recommend premium hearing aid technology when I've got peer-reviewed research that is telling me that there is absolutely no difference between premium and other basic level devices. Now my clinic is really busy, so it took me six months to complete four different case studies of my actual patients who are trialing premium level technology and one step down, which is advanced level technology. Now please keep in mind that I am not a research audiologist. I am a clinical audiologist, so research is not necessarily my forte. Now just so we're clear, my hypothesis before going into this study is that we would see a significant difference in the performance and in the outcomes of the individuals in the premium level technology versus the advanced level technology. That being said, let's go ahead and get into the methods of the study. I decided to recruit four of my patients, two female and two male, all of them were above the age of 55. One female and one male were previous hearing aid users, and one male and one female were new hearing aid users. Here are the audiograms for each of the participants, three of which were more severe high frequency losses, and one of which was more of a flat moderate loss. I fit each patient with the same brand and model of hearing devices, and the only thing that was different between these devices was the tech level, and they trialed the premium level devices for two weeks and the advanced level devices for two weeks. I designed these to be single blind case studies, so the patients did not know which one of these devices they were trialing at any given moment, but I did. And I followed best practices when fitting and programming each one of these devices. I also counterbalanced the technology levels, so two patients trialed the premium level devices first, and the other two patients trialed the advanced level devices first. Of course, I used real ear measurement to program these patients' hearing aids very close to NAL NL2 prescriptive targets for both premium and advanced level technology, which are marked in different colors. This way, we are controlling for the variable of audibility between premium and advanced devices, so we get a much better idea if the features of each type of technology were significantly different. All four patients were only given one automatic program, so they couldn't change into different programs for different environments. The hearing devices would do that on their own. However, each patient did have the ability to use volume control with their hearing aids. I had each patient complete a client-oriented scale of improvement at the end of each individual trial so we could see what their subjective improvement was and so we could compare the improvement between the premium and advanced technology. I also used a speech spatial qualities questionnaire to compare perceived performance differences at the conclusion of both trials to directly compare the two sets of devices. This particular questionnaire, which is also known as the SSQ-C, has 14 questions for speech hearing, 17 questions for spatial hearing, and 18 questions for qualities of hearing. Each question ranges from negative five, which is much worse, up to plus five, which is much better, with zero in the middle, which indicates unchanged. I also decided to complete a quick speech and noise test, also known as a quicksin, to evaluate performance differences while in noise. In general, the closer to zero that the score gets, the better this individual would expect to hear in a background noise situation when wearing those hearing devices. We will be able to use this data to compare to performance data with these patients using the opposite level of technology. But at the end of the day, each patient had to ultimately decide whether hearing aid A or hearing aid B was actually better and if the one that they felt was better was worth paying more money for. Okay, let's recap real quick. We had four case study participants, two are existing hearing aid users, and two are new hearing aid users. All of them are over the age of 55 with various degrees of hearing loss. Each participant was unaware if they were trialing premium or advanced technology. However, I was aware which technology they were trialing, which made this a single blind study, not a double blind study. I counterbalanced the study design, so two participants trialed the premium technology first, and two participants trialed the advanced technology first. 
I matched NAL NL2 real ear prescriptive targets as close as possible to allow the participants to primarily evaluate feature differences of the two technology levels. To subjectively evaluate performance, each participant was given a client-oriented scale of improvement, otherwise known as a COSI, after trialing each technology level to check for perceptual differences. Each participant was also given a speech-spatial qualities comparison subjective questionnaire, otherwise known as the SSQ-C, to directly compare the performance of the second technology level trialed with the first technology level trialed. To objectively measure performance differences, each participant was administered a quick speech and noise test to see if signal to noise ratio improvements were seen with one technology level over the other. And finally, each participant was asked which devices they preferred and ultimately elected to purchase before revealing the technology level of each set of trial devices. All right, let's go ahead and get into the results. At the end of the first two week trial period where two patients had the premium and two patients had the advanced level technology, every single one of these individuals reported a significant improvement in hearing. Here are the cozy results that indicated subjective improvement in the listening situations that were most important to each patient. As you can see, each patient reported significant benefit from their devices. Remember, two of these COSI questionnaires were for patients wearing premium technology and two were for patients wearing advanced technology. Now keep in mind, we could not have them take the SSQ-C questionnaire because that questionnaire is intended to compare directly the differences between these two sets of devices. So we had to wait all the way until the very end of the trial of both sets of devices before they could complete that questionnaire. All right, so after completing the COSI questionnaires at week two, I went ahead and jumped right into reprogramming their hearing devices with a different technology level. I did ask each one of the patients if they actually felt that they heard a difference in the technology levels while they were there in the office, but nobody reported any significant difference between the two at this point. Two weeks later, each one of these patients came back to the clinic to complete their COSI questionnaire and to complete their SSQ-C questionnaire to see if there are any performance differences between the two sets of devices. Here are the results of the COSI questionnaires that are designed to evaluate subjective performance of a hearing aid wearer for the premium technology and the advanced technology. As you can see, there are only slight differences between the subjective performance of each one of the patients with the premium and advanced level technology. Well, what about the SSQ-C questionnaires that directly compares the perceived performance of the premium technology versus the advanced technology for each one of the patients? So I went ahead and added up the numbers for each section, and the closer to zero, the less perceived differences between the two technology levels. Again, you can see that the difference scores did not indicate a significant difference between either set. So how did they do on the quicksin test to test how well they would expect to perform in a background noise situation with the opposite level of technology? Well, as you can see, there were no significant differences in the SNR loss scores between the patients wearing device pair A and device pair B, suggesting that the different technology levels did not have a significant impact on measurable performance in background noise. And at the end of the day, I would venture to say that there is no significant difference between premium level technology and advanced level technology. So ultimately, which device did each patient select? Well, patient number one selected device A, patient number two selected device B, patient number three selected device A, and last but not least, patient four selected device B. So which technology level did each patient ultimately pick? Each patient chose the premium level technology, despite the fact that we could not identify any significant differences between the two tech levels with multiple subjective questionnaires or objective testing. So how is this possible? Why did each one of these patients select the premium level technology over the advanced technology? Could it be random chance? It could be. Or perhaps it could just be that we don't have objective measures and subjective questionnaires that are sensitive enough to measure the significant performance differences between these technology levels. 
But the next question is, did each one of these patients feel like the difference in performance was actually worth justifying spending 200 extra dollars per hearing aid? And the answer to that was yes. And yes, these patients actually paid an additional $200 per device out of their own pocket, which holds more value than just hypothetical dollars. Now, I'm not really a big fan of using hypothetical questions in these scenarios, but I also asked each patient, hey, would you actually spend an additional $500 per hearing aid if that's what you had to pay as the difference? And all of them said that they would absolutely pay an additional $500 per hearing aid to get the premium technology versus the advanced technology. And this is important because even though in my clinic the difference is only $200, in most clinics that difference can be up to $500. Okay, so now the moment that some of you have been waiting for, and that's talking about the flaws of my design of this study. First, isn't it possible that each one of these patients just randomly selected the premium level technology versus the advanced level technology? The answer to this is yes there is a 6.25% chance that each one of these patients just randomly selected the premium level technology versus the advanced level technology. And this would be the equivalent of flipping a coin and having it land on heads four times in a row. Second, isn't the sample size of these four participants too small to be able to generalize this information for the rest of the population? And the answer to that is also yes. You would likely want to have a significantly larger group of individuals to be able to generalize this information and have it apply to everybody else in the rest of the population. Third, isn't it possible that I, Dr. Cliff, actually influenced the outcome of this study subconsciously? And the answer to that is also yes. This was not a double-blind study where I was oblivious to which technology level they were actually using. It was a single-blind study, which means that only the individuals who were testing the devices didn't know which ones they were testing, but I did. And there is always a potential bias when the tester knows which devices they're using. However, given all of these flaws, I still had to ask myself at the end of the day if I felt that it was morally okay and ethically okay for me to recommend premium technology to my patients given the fact that even in my own study it showed that there was no significant difference when I actually measured the outcomes. For me at least, the answer is yes. And this is why I recommend premium technology to every single one of my patients now. Now I'm gonna tell you exactly what I tell my patients who comes in for hearing treatment when I'm explaining technology levels. I say that there are different tiers of technology. You have tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four, and sometimes even tier five. Now, each time you go down in tier level, in technology level, you actually take away features and customizations from those devices and from me, the person who's programming those devices for you. However, does it guarantee that you will drop performance each time you drop down in tier level? The answer to that is no. However, there is the potential that you would leave benefit on the table. So that being said, the only reason that you drop down from a higher level of technology to a lower level of technology is cost. If you cannot reasonably afford a higher level of technology, then you drop down to the technology level that you can reasonably afford, and then it is my job to maximize the performance of those devices. But given what I've seen in my clinic, I just can't fathom the idea of not recommending the highest level of technology that someone can reasonably afford with the potential that they would get better benefit out of it. Now I do receive a lot of criticism from hearing care professionals who say that, hey, this Cox data that's out there basically means that if you ever sell a premium level device to anybody, you are being unethical. And you know what? I totally get it. But at the end of the day, I have to do what I feel is best for my patients and I feel that premium technology is better. And unless I see data that actually shows that advanced technology outperforms premium technology, I'm going to recommend premium technology to every single one of my patients. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. If you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.